For more on the markets, let's bring in RBC's head of U.S. equity strategy, Lori Calvacina. Lori, great to see you. Hi, great to be here. Um, you're calling for 2750 on the S&P 500. What's, what's your number one worry about this market? So, look, I, I agree with a lot of what Dan said. I think that the rally has actually been pretty logical. It's tr it's very textbook. The kinds of things you would expect to work off a recession low have been working. But it's pretty rich right now. We think we're trading about 25 times this year's earnings, 21 times next year's earnings. You had a valuation opportunity. It's dissipated. And now we've got to confront the reality that we are going to be in a pretty deep hole in this economy for a while. So markets are focused on rate of change, ignoring the lousy levels. Um, I think there are a number of hurdles that are coming up, um, you know, in particular, the 2020 election, I think, is a big risk looming over the markets this summer that investors are really starting to pay attention to. Um, I think also just the idea that we've seen this sequential progress happening recently. Is that just pent up animal spirits, as I think, as I think Tim said earlier, or is that going to be a sustained move if we just, you know, if this is just a big sigh of relief that's going on right now. And then we don't see that continued improvement on all fronts. I think markets are going to have a tough time. And, you know, frankly, I, I worry when we're talking about the consumer, we never saw consumer sentiment fall to financial crisis lows the way we did different industrial economic indicators. So if we do get a second wave of the virus, if we do have a changing of a guard in Washington, um, these are all things that could potentially still come back and weigh on consumers. If a lot of those job loss, those jobs that were lost don't come back, I don't think that's factored into the consumer psyche, and it's certainly not factored into markets right now. It's funny because the 2020 election seems so far away and because of all the stuff that's going on right now. And yet it's, it's really right around the corner, Lori. And you sort of address yeah. in terms of changing of the guard. But how does a market and I want to be clear to our audience, we're not a political show, so we're not saying yeah. endorsing Democrats or Republicans or anything like that. But how do the markets perceive Donald Trump staying in office or things being status quo in Washington? Is that the preferred scenario still? So we, we try to stay out of the politics as well. And one of the ways we do that is we do regular investor surveys and we ask equity investors, how do you think markets will react in different scenarios? And what we have seen consistently when we've been doing that over the last year, year and a half, is that equity investors think that a Trump re-election is a positive outcome for markets. Um, and we've also seen that equity investors have generally expected the Senate to stay in Republican hands, thought that, that there was really no chance that the Democrats um, would be able to come back in. So it was sort of a hedge. Even if Trump lost, the Senate wouldn't flip, and so there wouldn't be any massive policy change. Now, what we know is that if you look at the betting markets, if you look at the predicted data, um, Trump's expectations, his chances for re-election, according to the betting markets, have really fallen. Um, and some of those data points that are tracked there, Biden has it by a nose. Um, and also the Senate is viewed by the betting markets now as basically a toss-up. So the, the expectations on the political front that sort of the market-friendly scenario would stay in place, uh, that's really started to fade in the betting markets. And I talk to a lot of investors who watch what's happening in those betting markets daily, and they're starting to get very worried. Hey, Lori, it's Dan. Um, assuming that we don't see a, a massive second wave in the virus and that we continue to have the stimulus and things are, are generally um, calmed down as far as in the streets here in America, what do you think the biggest risk right now to just things continuing to kind of move forward? Is it high unemployment um, in the back half of this year into next year? And what sort of unemployment rate should investors get comfortable with as we go into 2021? That, that's a great question on the unemployment rate. Look, I don't have a specific number in my head, but I think it's probably going to be higher than what investors are anticipating. Um, you know, I, I think, frankly, the biggest risk is probably the consumer itself and those job losses. And what I've started to hear some concerns about from investors I speak with is, are we going to get a second wave of layoffs? So we've seen that companies have really been focused on cost cutting. And initially, at least, they're standing by their employees trying to keep people employed. But it's not clear that that's going to, that's going to last. Um, just that the emphasis on cost cutting is going to be there. Um, and, and also companies have higher costs that they've got to manage against, that they've got to balance against, because all these things you have to do to keep your employees safe, your workers safe, those are going to eat into margins. So that's going to create incremental pressures. Um, so, you know, we think markets are basically anticipating the perfect V-shaped recovery. Everyone gets back to normal in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. um, the jobs mostly come back. And that, that even if it happens, it's in the stocks now. So we, we've seen that, you know, markets are not reacting well today. We got some economic data that came in a little worse than expected all week. It was the opposite. The data was better than expected. I don't think the setup here is necessarily for the data to come in better than expected anymore. All right. Lori, thank you. Great to see you.
Lori Calvacina, Thanks for having me. RBC. Um, Guy Damian, of course, tomorrow is the big jobs report. Sure it is. I mean, and, you know, the, all over the map. And quite frankly, if you told me what the number is going to be right now, I think I have a 50-50 shot in terms of understanding mm -hmm. where the market's going to go. I don't think you have any edge whatsoever because, quite frankly, I don't know what's a good number and what's a bad number at this point. What I'll say is this, 2750 within, you know, a few digits is where, we th where I thought the S&P would stop on the upside, sort of that 2800 level. So I understand where she's getting that number one. Number two, she brings up valuations. You know, I do think valuations matter. And right now, if, even if you assume $130 worth of earnings, which I think is somewhat ridiculous, you're still talking about a market trading 24 times. And who knows what it's going to look like next year. And to your point that you've made about pay cuts and layoffs, nobody wants to say it. And I'm not sure any CEOs want to say it right now in this environment. But behind closed doors, you can rest assured that they're talking about how do we reduce headcount, and how do we reduce pay, uh, compensation? That's absolutely going on, and nobody can tell me otherwise. None of that, by the way, is particularly bullish.